Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at two reports, one for examination and one is for review for pro forma financial information. What is neat about the reports is it summarizes everything that you have learned about pro forma financial information. So it basically summarizes everything. Let's go ahead and get started by looking at the report. First, we need to know that there are no standard reports. So the AICPA don't have a standard report. They provide examples, and this is one of the examples, couple examples that I used to illustrate the concepts. I know I keep saying this every time, but you need to know this, that there is no standard report, but they, they give you some examples. First, you have to have the title, independent accountant's report, because you are providing an assurance, you need to be independent. You have to mention the addressee. Who are you addressing the report to? First, you have to start by looking at the nature of the engagement. What's the nature of the engagement? We have examined. There's an examination. The pro forma adjustment given effect to the underlying transaction described in note one and the application of these adjustments to the historical amounts of the balance sheet of Adam Company and the related pro forma condensed statement of income for the year and criteria based in note one. So remember, pro forma is applying adjustments to historical financial information. So you have to explain that the pro forma adjustment and describe it. And in our situation, it's the, the adjustment is described in note one, which is we don't have to know about this. The historical condensed financial statements are derived from the historical financial statement of Adam Company. Of course they are, which were audited by us. So we audited the financial statement. And it look here that we are using the financial statement of another company, Y company, which were audited by another company. And this is an example, if you remember, when I explained the pro forma financial statement, we looked at Tesla and Solar City. And we said, let's assume Tesla and Solar City merge took place on January 1st, 2015. Well, in reality, the merger took place sometime in November 2016. So this basically will be an example where you have two companies merging and you are looking at the consolidated financial statement on a prior date, seeing what if that happened earlier? What if that transaction took place earlier? We also have to know that the pro forma financial adjustments are based on management assumptions. Again, they are described in note one. Adam Company Management is responsible for the pro forma financial information. Of course, the company is responsible. And our responsibility as the practitioner is to express an opinion. Of course, we are expressing an opinion. This is an examination on the pro forma financial statement based on our examination. The next thing we do is we talk about our examination. It was conducted following the certified public accountant, the AICPA, American Institute of AICPA. Those standards require that we plan and perform the examination to obtain reasonable assurance based on the criteria in note one. You know, management assumption provide a reasonable basis for presenting the significant effect of that transaction or event. So basically we talk a little bit more and we talk about the examination involving performing procedures to obtain evidence. Again, examination, you need evidence about management assumptions and the related pro forma adjustment and the pro forma amount and the pro forma condensed balance sheet of Adam Company and statement of income for the year ended. The nature, timing and extent of the procedures depend on our judgment, including an assessment of the risk of material misstatement, whether due to error or fraud. So it sounds like an audit, except we cannot use the word audit. We, we use the word examination. Also, it sounds like an audit. We believe that the evidence obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide reasonable basis for our opinion. This is an examination. So we have to describe the engagement, explain what an examination is. We are we are collecting sufficient appropriate evidence to provide reasonable basis, reasonable assurance for our, again, opinion. We also have to talk about the objective of the engagement. The objective is to show the significant effect on the historical financial information might have been had the transaction occurred at an earlier date. Again, with the, with the example of Tesla and Solar City, the actual merger took place in November 2016. Well, Tesla and Sol Solar City prepared the pro forma as of the beginning of 2015. But we have to have a limitation of the engagement. Discuss the limitations. The pro forma condensed 
are not necessarily indicative of the results of operation that would have been attained. So although we're saying this is what could have happened, but it doesn't mean that would have actually have happened. But this is what we think would have happened. Okay, so there's a limitation in a sense that don't take this, you know, as truth. There's a grain of salt here. Okay, and here we're not limiting the report. What we're saying is the engagement itself has its own limitation. So we have to let you know, don't believe this is this is the is that this is the truth 100%. It is the truth based on our assumption, but it doesn't mean that what, what could have have happened, what could have had, what could have had happened, okay? Because you don't know what could have have happened. This is what we think. Then the last paragraph is our opinion based on note one, management assumptions provide a reasonable basis in all material respect. Uh, the related pro forma adjustment give appropriate effect to those assumptions. So we're saying everything is good based on the assumptions, based on the criteria in note one. Basically, this is a clean opinion. Then we use the signature a block. Then we use the signature block. Now, this is what we went over is an examination of the pro forma. The next thing we're going to look at is a review of the pro forma. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. For a review, again, there is no standard report. Practically the same thing, AICPA provide examples. We have to start with the title, and the, word, the title will have the word independent, that we are independent. We have to have the address C. We have to mention the nature of the engagement. Now what we are doing, we are not examining, we are reviewing. And practically the rest of it is practically the same as examination. I'm not going to go over, but practically the same explaining what's the management responsibility, what is your responsibility, and the criteria is in note one. So basically everything the same except paragraph one we have reviewed. Now, now in the second paragraph, now we're going to talk about what did we do? Well, we reviewed following AICPA, practically the same thing. We followed AICPA to obtain limited assurance, a review comes with limited limited assurance based on the criteria and note one we describe the engagement what is a review basically then we have to explicitly state now this this sounds like why are we doing this we have to explicitly state that a review is less in scope than an examination so this is different so we ex explicitly say in the second paragraph that this is a review this is not an examination and we say that in an examination we issue an opinion here we are not issuing any opinion so we have to say this a review is substantially less in scope than an examination which is the objective of which is to obtain reasonable assurance whether based on the criteria uh, presented the significant effect directly attributable in all attributable to in all material respect to that blah 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 until we say in order to express an opinion so we, we're not doing any of this we're just saying this is what an examination is so everything that i that I scratched out, it's basically telling you that's not what we're doing. This is this is an examination. Accordingly, we do not express an opinion. This is a review. We believe that our review, reasonable basis for a conclusion. We provide a conclusion. We don't provide an opinion. We have provide reasonable assurance for a conclusion, which is a limited assurance. Again, same thing. We tell you what's the objective of the engagement. The objective of the engagement is show you what would have what would have happened assuming the transaction took place earlier we also tell you about the limitation of the engagement what we're telling you not necessarily what would have had happened but this is what we think so again not necessarily indicative of the results of the operation and guess what we have a conclusion the conclusion obviously will be different than the examination because we are dealing with a review a review will provide a negative assurance or limited assurance and it would read something like this a review based on our review we are not aware of any material modification 
that would be made the management assumption in order for them to provide reasonable basis for presenting the significant effect, blah, blah, blah. That's that's the criteria based on note one, so on and so forth. So it's a limited assurance or negative assurance, the conclusion. What should you do now? The best way to kind of consolidate your knowledge is to go to Farhat lectures and work MCQs, whether those MCQs are CPA practice or previously released AI CPA questions. You really want to get those questions answered correctly on the CPA exam. Those are easy points. Good luck. Study hard. Stay safe and don't shortchange yourself. The CPA exam is worth it.